everybody, welcome to another Epic Quack Tuts. Today I'm going to show you how to make an AU5 Neuro Ground Bass. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of shit in this tutorial. A lot of resampling, EQ modulation, all kinds of post-processing, layering. So I highly suggest you watch the whole thing because like I said, I go through a lot of stuff. So the particular bass is from his Blossom VIP. Uh, first I'll play you, I'll show you exactly what, song, what part I'm talking about here. <laughs> That's the one right there. So this is what mine sounds like. Obviously, it's not going to be exact. I mean, it's kind of impossible to recreate an, a an AU5 bass because it, it sounds like it's just that good. But this one's this is mine. It's pretty close. It's not exact, like I said, but it's the closest I could get. Um, so we got two different serum patches and then a base layer or a sub layer in the bottom. But uh, the first one is AU5 layer one. Right here, this is what it sounds like. Really detuned, kind of squarish, you know, sound going on there. Um, so the first one is this square saw something something right here, all the way down at the bottom. Square saw wired, weird, I don't know what that stands for. But uh, unison, bring up the 8, and it's detuned to 0 .05. The blend is at 61, phase in the middle, random all the way up. Uh, wave table position is at 177, and I did remap one, and I just kind of made it look like this. I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew exactly what that does, but I just, you know, just click that, make it look like that, and that's what that's what I did. Then I brought it, brought it up to 10%. Pin in the middle, level all the way up. All right. Oscillator B is basic shapes. When I first started trying to recreate this sand, I was like, going in like into a uh, spectral and trying to make it with all like super complex like weird wave tables and I was like all it probably is is just a, a, a re-space with just a shitload of post-processing and shit like that so that's kind of what I just went for it's simple you know basic shapes square waves shit like that so I chose this like square saw hybrid thing going on it's the last one under basic shapes all the way in the back and uh 16 on the unison detune point 0.13 and the blend is a 75. Phase, all, uh, phase in the middle, random, all the way up. Wave table positions all the way up. Not using the warp, level all the way up. So I went through the different filters and I wanted to recreate the exact movement he has. And um, so this, this one kind of made it, you know, recreated the best, I think. It's just a high pass with a notch. It's under multis right there. So you got the high pass with a high Q, and then you got a notch in the uh, higher range. And they're just kind of, you know, they merge into each other real quick, and then they pull back. And that's just, that, that's what gives it that, that neuro uh, feel. So uh, cutoff is at 40 hertz, eh, resonance 30%, pans in the middle, bring the drive up 15%. And the frequency, that's the uh, notch up here, that's at 89%. And mix is 100%. So then envelope 2 that's doing, as you can see, all the modulation here. Just no attack, holds all the way down. Decay is eight, uh, 811 milliseconds, sustain all the way down. 15 milliseconds on the uh, release. And uh, so go ahead and bring envelope 2 to the wavetable position of oscillator A. Drag it down minus 67. Bring it to the warp. Drag it up 50. Uh, cut off, drag it up 47. And then the frequency, minus 37. All right. And then these octaves right here, bring it up one octave and down one octave because there's a lot of, of uh, pitch modulation outside of serum. So then we've got the hyper dimensions, widen it up a bit. All it did was just bring the mix up to, or the wet, yeah, the mix up to 29%. Uh, tube distortion, not using the filter. Mix is all the way up and the drive is at 55%. And then bring envelope two to the drive and just drag it all the way down. Flanger, rate is all the way down. The depth is at 57%. Feedback, 70%. Phase in the middle, and you mix, 31%. Bring envelope 2 to the depth right here, and drag it up 28. So then, EQ, just EQ modulation, just to add on to the uh, filter right here. It's pretty much just doing the same, the same movement, right? It looks exactly like the filter. Just a high pass with a high Q, and then a notch in the high frequency range. That's all it is. So it's just mimicking pretty much the same movement, which is just emphasizing it even more. 
So, uh, like I said, we get the high pass, bring the Q up to 65. Don't need to worry about the gain. Frequency is at 86 hertz. Bring envelope 2 to the frequency and drag it up 35. Then, like I said, we got a notch right here. Frequency for that is 9,910 hertz. Q is 54%, and the gain is minus 17.4. Bring envelope 2 to the frequency and drag it down, minus 55. All right, then. So then, for the uh, second filter, I did the phaser 24 plus filter on the flanges. Right about there. You can hear it definitely gives it that, you know, obviously that phaser effect to it. And uh, it just sounded better with it. So cut off 528 hertz, resonance 56%, drive 35%, mix all the way up. Go ahead, bring envelope 2 to the cutoff, drag it up 528 hertz, and then to the mix, bring it down minus 41. Compressor, turn it on, turn on multiband, and just drag the gain up 12.2 dB. And that's all it is. You can see how big of a difference that multiband compressor makes. Alright. So then, that's it. That's it for the first patch right there. Then go ahead, open up uh, whatever you use to do your pitch automation, and just make it look like this. So I'm going to start at zero, quickly go up to 35, down to 15, and then right back to zero. And then I added Camel Crusher for some extra saturation. So that's that. Uh, go ahead and now we'll do the second layer, AU5 layer number two, and it's going to sound like this. This one's definitely a little bit dirtier, a little bit more neuro, and more AU5 sounding, and uh, let's make this one real quick. Uh, Trello Bite 3 for the first one. Bring the octave down one, unison's at one, so you don't have to worry about the top part, uh, except for random in the phase. Uh, wave table position's at 207. We're using sync, and that's at 1.65%. Pan in the middle, level at 86%. All right, then. Uh, oscillator B, basic shapes, saw wave. Bring it up to 16 voices on the unison, all the way up. Detunes at zero. One thing about AU5 basses that are just amazing is the amount of movement that's in them. Like, they'll get wider, and then they'll get more, you know, more mono as the sound evolves. So that's pretty much what I try to replicate with this uh, modulating the detune. So it's gonna it's gonna start, you know, centered and then just get wider, which is, you know, it just makes it more interesting and just cooler. So yeah, I did that. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. So yeah, wave table position is at two. I don't think I said blend is at 56. Right, yeah, two, it's a saw wave. I'm not using the warp, levels all the way up. And then filter, same exact thing, high pass, notch, filter. Uh, oscillator A and B, both going through the filter. Same thing with this first one, I don't know if I said that. They're both going through the filter. Uh, cut off, 40 hertz, resonance, 30%. Pan in the middle, bring the drive up a bit, just 14%, that's about it. And frequency, 89%, and you mix 100% again. Alright, so then envelope 2. I believe it's the exact same... Oh, there, what's going on here? Same thing. Exact same settings for envelope two. So what I would do, just make it easier on yourself. After you finish making this first patch, just save it and then just con and then just continue with the same patch. You know what I mean? So then you have you have uh, you don't have to restart from scratch, right? You already have the envelope made up, the filters and shit like that. So I would recommend doing that just to make it easy on yourself. Just looking out for you guys. You know, what I'm talking about it. Uh, what we at here? Envelope two. All right, so that's the settings. Go ahead, bring envelope to the wavetable position of oscillator A, drag it down, minus 48, bring it to the cutoff, drag it up 47, and the frequency down 37. And then, so LFO3, uh, just triangle, triangle shape, uh, on trigger, BPM anchor, the rate is one half. So LFO, that's what's modulating this detune right here, making it uh, wider and more narrow. So just go ahead, like I said, bring it to, to the detune and drag it up. 43. Then bring it to the sink of oscillator A and drag it down, or the warp, and drag it down minus 63. Alright, so the FX section is pretty much the same thing. The distortion and the flanger are the exact same as the first patch. The only thing a little bit different with the EQ is um, I modulated the Q slope. 
So the notch that we have right up here in the higher range, that's going to get wider and narrower as the sound evolves. I'll show you what I mean. So when it starts up here, it's real thin, and then it gets wider as we get up to the uh, higher frequency ranges. For one, it sounded cool, and two, it cleaned up that high end a bit towards the end of the sound. It just brought out, you know, brought down those super high frequencies a lot, which you kind of needed with the sound because there's too much of them. So that's the two reasons I did that. So, um, so for that, I used LFO2. Just make it look like that, right? The shape, just drag it up a bit. Uh, same settings as LFO1. So bring it to the Q and just drag it down minus 38. And again, the frequency range is 109 hertz. And envelope 2 is going up to 24 on the right side. 99.10 and drag it down to minus 55, just in case you didn't get it in the first one. Alright, so then the phaser for the second one is different. This filter here, cutoff is at 173 hertz. Resonance, 56%. Drive, 35%. And uh, mix is 100%. So go ahead, bring the envelope 2 to the cutoff, drag it up 31. And the mix, down minus 41. And compressor, same exact thing. Multiband, bring the gain up 12.2 dB. And you got yourself this pretty sick bass. And that's just inside Serum. So uh, I think I got everything for that. So then it's the exact same uh, pitch modulation automation for uh, the second patch. You know, it's the same exact thing. And then the automation, I just had another, I just had a bell curve. Uh, it's up by 6.1. 1.9 dB, Q is 1.9, and it's just doing this movement. Just kind of sweeping up and down the frequency range, just emphasizing that growl bass even more. Starts at 270 hertz, goes up to 35, 100, down to 76, up to 1, uh, 13.62, right? Just make it look like that. Not much to say about that. So then after that, uh, I just had a sub layer. Just uh, only instead of using a sound wave, I used a triangle wave. Just sounded pretty cool. Just brought the octave down one. And um, yeah, bring the uh, right up here, the pitch wheel thing up, up one octave and down one octave. And it's the exact same pitch automation. So then I just resampled both of these and you know, I exported them to audio, bounce them in place, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we got. I sent them to the same bus, cleaned them up a tiny bit with the CQ, took out all the sub, and brought out, brought down some of the uh, high end up to 12,600 hertz. Layered it with the sub bass. That's what we got. Um, I did add some, some a bit of chorus on there. It doesn't make that much of a difference, but it just gives it more effect. I don't know. You don't really need that. So that's it for the sound, pretty much. And if you do use Logic, one other thing you could do is throw that ring shifter on there and get some pretty crazy effects. Ring shift is pretty sick. But that's it. Thanks for watching this Epi Quap Tuts, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.